It feels like home, home, home. It feels like home, home, home. It feels like home. Hey there, my friends. Many of you know some of my story, and some of you know most of my story, but today I want to share a little bit of my story that you might not know. When my mother was very, very young, she found out that she was pregnant with me, and she didn't feel like she was someone who was qualified to take care of a baby. So she chose to do what she thought was her best option, and she drove down to Mexico. She was on her way, actually, to Mexico um, to have her pregnancy terminated. and. Her mother, my grandmother, intercepted her and stopped her and said, I will do whatever it takes to help you with this baby, but please don't end the pregnancy. And so my brave mother chose to have me at full term. And at about three months of age, she decided it really was not something that was her ambition in life to be a mother and she just didn't feel like it was something she was good at and so my grandmother said I told you that I would do whatever it takes and I am happy to take this child in and raise her as my own and that's exactly what she did and I am obviously forever grateful but our church is sponsoring an event for something called the Life Center and it's really exciting because they are wanting to provide that opportunity for women who find themselves in the same position as my mother was. Someone who feels desperate, not sure what else to do, not knowing what to do, not sure how she could possibly make it through a pregnancy. This would be a place that women could come and get prenatal care and get housing and just be well taken care of, both them and their baby and have all of the options explored for them. Um, adoption or keeping the baby and even hoping to help them get on their feet and get a job. So um, my friends and I are making journals to try and raise money for the Life Center that will be built in Troutman, North Carolina. Our church is a Calvary Chapel there and it has been on their heart to purchase this land and this building and it's currently being renovated and there are lots of steps underway but we need lots of money so we're trying to do our best to come alongside in whatever way we can and so today I'm going to show you how I and how my dear friend Carissa have made some journals and these are just some of the examples of the ones that we will be selling um, at the Life Center craft fair which is happening on September 30th and some of these are to totally finished and this one is probably my favorite. So see it's just, it's been covered with fabric and then we painted on them and then just kind of glued the inside. So that's, that's what we're demonstrating today is the how to, how to do some of these things. I thought this one was fun too. It's just an idea I kind of copied offline but I thought, isn't that great? Enjoy Jesus Christ, thou shalt never thirst instead of the Coke logo. I just thought that was clever. Anyway, I hope that you will enjoy this uh, video of how to do your own journal and you can do it either with just plain uh, fabric like this one or you can do it where you go ahead and paint it afterwards like we did with some of these. Anyway, I want you to meet my dear friend Carissa and that's what's up next. Hey there friends, welcome to Weldon Home. I'm Tanya and I'm here with my beloved friend Carissa today. And she and I are in the process of doing some journals that we're painting because our church is building a life center. We are going to do a great big um, arts and craft fair and we're going to be selling our journals and they will look something like this. We're doing hand painted ones, so this is not hand painted, but this is one that I made with my sons. And they start out like this one, we hold that one up. So they start out, we just get them at Walmart, like the little cheap journals and then we cover them with fabric. And so from there, we're gonna paint these because we're gonna try and just be really creative and cool. <laughs> but um, Chris is gonna show us how to cover them with the fabric, which is the first step in making these lovely journals. So the first thing you're going to do is measure out your fabric to make sure that it covers your book. Um, so do you want you. this one or this one? Hmm, let's do the light since we're 
Okay, so I always do a little bit more than what you think you'll need um, just because you're going to glue it inside and so you want to have a little bit of wiggle room. So you kind of want to just lay out your fabric and then kind of just eyeball how much you'll need. You want enough to be able to go inside of the book, maybe about two or three inches, um, and then enough on the top to also come over a little bit. So she's got some hanging over here, and to make up for that not being here, we're gonna cut about here and then cut about here. So you just want to make sure that it comes all the way over your edge. So this is what we're gonna end up with at the end. So you can see the fabrics inside there. And do you have to iron your fabric or anything before you do that? Nope, you do not. When you put the Mod Podge on and it's all wet and sticky, it'll make your, uh, your cloth even out pretty nicely if you even it out. <laughs> so just get a lot on there. And then make sure you get all the corners. Sometimes they're <laughs> a little tricky, but it dries clear. So even if you get some on the book, it won't matter. And then do the spine. And once you've got it all mod podged, then you'll want to pull it really, really tight and just start pressing it down, smoothing it out, making sure there's no crinkles or cracks. And then you can even run your finger or a pencil or something down through the binding here so that it gives it that look of actually still being <laughs> but really make sure and pull it and that'll so we're using extremely thin fabric because we're going to paint but you could even use something more like this if you wanted to and I have done it with that and then I just paint over the top of that and leave maybe like just this flower exposed or just these little flowers exposed and then I paint the rest but this is a much thicker fabric to work with so it's not as see-through as this this white one since we're just using it to do a backdrop for our painting almost like a blank canvas it'll be perfect just this weird extra hanging there. So kind of eyeball it if you need to. You can draw lines with your pencil. I usually just eyeball it. <laughs> I um, use the fold itself sort of as the what I clip on. Oh, I see. So I see. see I just clipped like that. Oh yeah. That's and a great idea. Okay. 
Yeah. Oh, off. you don't have to do any extra little bits. I, this is just a very non-fussy project. Mm -hmm. You want to cut all the way up to that line so you have a full um, strip hanging here. And I'll show you what we'll do with that in a second. But there's the strip on that side. And you'll do both sides of those. on the outside of the fabric to lay down the other piece. So then you will fold this inside and lay it right over. I have a different way I do the corners. I'll show you on the next one. We'll see. Your way is probably better. <laughs> We're folding sheets together. Might be. And sometimes I'll watch Podge on top of it too to keep it. That looks great though, actually. Just to give it a little extra. So that it's completely soaked. You can actually feel the glue through all of this. It's very, very wet. take this page and I want to make sure I got enough on there but we'll take this page and just fold it over and make sure you get a good a good crease out of it um, but just fold this over and stick it down get some house away credit cards. This is the only good use for a credit card, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, and now do you want to do this side? How you do this side? So when I do it, I usually cut these corners just a little bit like this. Cut that off. And cut that off. And then, and I... It takes me forever to do these. You did it so fast. I um, usually wait for everything to kind of dry in the middle so that it just is really help. It, it totally works fine without you waiting, which is, I'm like, okay, next time I'm not waiting. <laughs> it might be better to wait. <laughs> no, I think it's fine. So I just normally go in the corners first, like this. Oh, I like that. You need to just make sure that there's plenty of glue stuck in that little that little um, tunnel right there of fabric so that that lays down. But you put that at a 45, and then push this over like this. Just take a little. My hands are down covered. 
covered with glue. <laughs> You just want to make sure that you've got enough to hold underneath the paper, right? And once this paper is folded down, we're not going to lose those. So I do it like that. And that way, I don't worry about that one thing, but I, I like your technique too. I like the way this looks. So then you just take and do the same thing here. Get that all nice and Gloopy. Augustus Gloop. <laughs> Everybody has seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The only good one is the first one. I'm sorry. That is true. Yeah. Any of these modern retellings are like subpar. I'm sorry. Gene Wilder is the only Willy Wonka. <laughs> okay. So then when I do it, I just fold it like this onto itself and I press down. That is genius. That is totally the way I would do it if I had that. And then I open it back up just to make sure that we're all good in here. And best use I've ever seen for a credit card. <laughs> so that way it's just nice and held down. And don't, don't let any of that glue be there. I probably could have used some more glue on these edges, but I can go back later and get that. So that's phase one, yes? Yes. All right, so then yeah, the last thing you'll do right now is put these little guys down into, so I usually open the book, so you have a little spot there, and then take a pencil. Oh, a knife, that's genius. Oh, that's so much easier. <laughs> what? I'm learning so much today. This is unreal. <laughs> All right, so, yep. Well, you made it look a lot better than I do. <laughs> All right. Get down in there. There we go. <laughs> there we go. And now it looks like a book. So now we can paint them. Yay!